Yeah. It's the little elf boy, right? Yeah. The well, he's not. I don't know. He's even. Oh, elf. I thought he was just, just a, a, He's just a weird little guy. I thought it was like a leprechaun like a, or no, an elf. A, weird just, yogurt monster. No, he's just a guy wearing weird clothes. Yeah. He's, berries and cream. Berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries. And yeah. Cream. He's like a leprechaun, right? No, he's just a he's guy. He's a lad. A lad's a leprechaun. No, nah, he's just a guy. But he and he. There's another video where he teaches you to do his berries and cream dance. Oh. <laughs> Did you send it to Kai Shell? Oh, I, why did she like it? She was obsessed. That's why I don't watch it, is because that's all they would watch. I don't remember. It's been I don't know. <laughs> Are you like listening to the birds? Birds. And They've been going the whole time. Kind of heck of Birdy bird. All right. He's the word. We ready? Yeah. Yep. It's been too long. It feels like it's been a decade. You missed it when we were recording it. The, oh, gosh. I, it took me like three times to get the intro comfortably. Well, like, and then I that one time when we did the whole thing and then it was just... <laughs> yeah. Thanks for entering the crypt with us. We're Bone Patrol. I'm Aaron. Chris. I'm Tyler. And we're back. We're back as a squad. It's been a good minute, but here we are. And we have a very, 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 very special announcement I think that was the exact right amount of varies. We are actually finally on some podcast services and not just YouTube because we understand YouTube is not the easiest platform to listen to purely audio related material. Very true. So we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Casts and Radio Public. So go ahead if you use any of those. Oh, we're also on Anchor. We're using Anchor, and oh, I forget that they course. actually. Oh, of stream course, it. yeah, we are on Anchor. So you can listen to it there. And Anchor helps us put and upload our podcasts on all those other platforms. So please, please, please go to your favorite podcasting program platform that I listed. If it's not on there, please don't go use that one. Uh, give us a follow. Maybe listen to a couple, couple podcasts again. Or just let them play at night so we get some lessons. Yeah. So a funny thing is, is we I went to Disneyland not not that last week. I was there last, last week, week yeah. and that's when we started getting on to more podcasting services. And we got on to Spotify, and I didn't have a Spotify account, so I just made the free account. Didn't put any of my information in there. And while I was at Disneyland, I kept getting emails that people were hacking my account. They were logging in from like Germany, all around the world. And I didn't have any of my info on there. All I was was subscribed to our podcast. So I was like, whatever. They can get on and see that we have a podcast. Maybe we'll help us out. And towards the end of the day, a guy from Germany decided to listen to like a good five minutes of one of our podcast episodes. So apparently we're doing all right. Yeah. If a foreign hacker can listen to one of our podcasts, surely <laughs> one of you can share it with a friend. It's... We're not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So today's episode starts out new york mid-june 1951 at 11 15 p.m a young man around of 20 years old appears in times square now this this young man this young lad he is dressed in 19th century clothing and no one can quite describe how he got there it's almost as if he just kind of appeared in times square just out of nowhere wearing his old-timey clothing and he was disoriented, he was confused, and he found himself standing in the middle of an intersection, <laughs> confused and being hit by a taxi. Oh, this oh, young dang. lad was just trying to go viral before YouTube. I mean, I kind of imagine this young man with these long mutton chops just being like, oh, yeah, oh, wow. oh what is that? Is he, I mean, I guess we don't know where he's from, right? He just appears. Dude just appears, 20 years old, looking fly and being hit by a car <laughs> did he even know what a car 19th century i mean i feel like this guy could be a pimp as well what <laughs> what what led you to believe that i mean if he's looking fly dude's gotta be a pimp what <laughs> you can look fly on the casual just like walk around the town you don't have to be a pimp not, to be fly. not, not june, new york not mid-june new york 1951 yeah no I guess that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> so this this poor fellow appears in Times Square, taking it all in, and promptly gets hit and killed by a taxi. The taxi driver's just driving. He's like, hey, uh, no, guys, look at fly. <laughs> hey, yeah. man, that's the New York experience. You always get ha hit by a taxi. Yeah. And it happens in Elf. Yeah. He's running through the street, gets oh hit my by goodness. a taxi. In, uh, in Joker, he gets hit by a taxi. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. New it's York experience. The New York experience. This guy experienced it all within a second of appearing <laughs> in New York. So after being, oh, after fully experiencing New York and dying, his body was taken to the morgue, and they found some very interesting objects on him. They found a five-cent copper token for beer. A half in jar of peanut butter. What? what? Um, he had a couple of moldy no. Snickers bars. I think you're mixing that with the dead body we found last week. Two and a half tokens to Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, th- those are my tokens. You're right. I am getting this confused. <laughs> with just, <laughs> I don't know what you guys did last week when I wasn't here. Well, you weren't here either. I guess two weeks ago. What have you guys filmed your last cast together? A little pod, a little poltergeist Peas in the thing. Pod. I listened to that and I was deeply afraid. Why? Just you two alone in this room? Oh, we, well, yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> there, I had to it do was... some deep cleaning in this room. I had to get bleach. Well, when you are done or before you started? Both. <laughs> oh, nice. Same time. Wait, well, real quick, what is a five, this is, back to what they actually found on him. They legitimately found a five cent copper token for beer. It doesn't say a five cent piece. It doesn't say currency. What is a five cent copper token? And why is it strictly for beer? I mean, I wonder if it's kind of like back to the Chuck E. Cheese thing, kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese co- uh, coin for beer. It's like, hey, this five cent piece is worth maybe a pint of beer. or. Uh, why, why wouldn't you just buy the beer? Why would you buy tokens? I mean, I don't know. Or I don't. Maybe yeah. they're trying to create their own uh, currency, and then they're trying to take over the U.S. currency with beer, beer tokens. tokens. Yeah. Well, it's funny because the Chuck E. Cheese tokens have uh, the mouse's face on the token, so I imagine it's just Harry Truman's face, just right on it. Yeah, and then on the other side, it just says five cent beer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Interesting. <laughs> so I don't know what that is really, but they so they found that on him. They found. Oh, well, so on the, oh, but I forgot to say this. It, on the, the copper piece, it had the name of an unknown saloon. First off, having the name of any saloon is weird. But it, even talking to the older people in this area, nobody had even heard of anything about a saloon in the area at any point bearing that name. They Maybe fa- it's like early version of in-store credit <laughs> in store credit. Well, I, that's what i was wondering well, like you know they you, you can put it on your tab if you you know you know, yeah. you know the people who own it i wonder if it's the same thing where they just give them tokens and that's how they keep track of how much he's purchased yeah i mean honestly if he gives them like 20 bucks and he's like this is going to be my tab and then they can give however many you know uh cent pieces tokens to him and so he doesn't have to like uh, continuously bringing cash to the the saloon, and so he just has those tokens and he gives them. Hmm. Would that make it any easier than just bringing twenty dollars? Have a pocket full of tokens or a one twenty dollar bill? I feel I mean, like Chuck E. Cheese is the same way. I have a feeling though, <laughs> but you get them while you're there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I have a feeling that in nineteenth century saloon era, beer tokens were just as wanted as currency. So I don't think you were oh, any yeah. safer. It's true. They also, on his person, found a bill for the care of a horse and washing of a carriage at a stable on Lexington Avenue, which also nobody in the area had ever heard of. They found $70 in banknotes, a business card bearing the name of Rudolph Fence, and an address on Fifth Avenue. There was also a letter that he had on him that was sent to the Fifth Avenue address dated 1876 from Philadelphia, and a third place medal for a three-legged race. So, wait, how big is this uh, third place medal? I, I I feel like this is like... Smaller than the five-cent copper token for beer, I'm sure. <laughs> Tiny. Just, it's the size of I love I love how he has that how he has that in his pocket. It's like, it's really special for him. Maybe he had just won. That's true, yeah. Maybe he had three-legged raced himself into another dimension. Oh, my gosh. I feel like everything on this man perfectly describes the 19th century. Carriages, three-legged race, and beer tokens. Yeah, so this man, he appears. He gets hit by a taxi. They find all of these weird objects on him. Maybe find a name, Rudolph Fence. But all of these objects on him sound really out of date for the time period it is, 1951. Most of them bearing names of locations that nobody has heard of. Kind of weird. 
Maybe he was trying to pull some stunt for a saloon he was opening. Yeah, could he have just been an actor? Could you know? Been. Was there a chance he was an actor and he'd been working on a set nearby and just walking home from work and hit by a taxi? Maybe that was the scene they were filming. What if what if he was a volunteer for a magic show and he made the, get, the magician made Rudolph disappear and then he just appears <laughs> in the, Times Square yeah, and just gets hit by a taxi? <laughs> The magician's like, I didn't think that would work. Wait, what? <laughs> it's like that, what's the illusionist or whatever, where there's all the top hats? Or is that the prestige? Oh, prestige, yeah. Yeah, where there's all the top hats. There's just a bunch of dudes looking like Rudolph stacked <laughs> in the middle of Times Square just because they teleport and get hit by a taxi. <laughs> it was weird enough. I, I think that these objects were dating, some of them over 70 years old. But Captain Hubert V. Rim of the Missing Persons Department of the NYPD attempted to identify this mystery taxi hitting getting hit by mystery lad the, yeah the mystery lad mr mutton chops mr mutton chops the the boy that guy captain hubert v rim attempted to identify the boy but he there was nothing on him so he he went to the 5th avenue address that they found on the letter and it, at this point, it was a business, and the owner had not the slightest clue who Rudolph Fence was. The name also couldn't be found in any address book. His fingerprints were not recorded anywhere, and there had been zero missing persons cases opened for him. I can't help but picture that this Hubert Rim guy sounds like George Takai. Like, he shows up to the crime scene, he's like, oh my. Oh my. Oh, what is this? Oh, a beer token. Oh, oh my. What's a, a salute? Oh. I mean, what do you do at this point? Uh, we've, we've already covered multiple cases on this show where there's something really weird going on, but the police have zero lead or direction on where they should go. And so most of the time, these things just kind of die cold. I feel like the government is so good at hiding things. Why can't they just, like, also make up a really good story instead of just hiding it? Be like, this Rudolph guy, yeah, he's a, he's a real Nazi. That's why we killed him on the spot here in Times Square. I mean, how many people honestly saw that? It couldn't have been that many. There's no way it was that big of a deal unless they were publicly releasing all the stuff they found on him. I feel, in reality, the amount of people that saw him, they didn't have enough time to analyze that he was old. And then, I don't know. I feel yeah. that that no one really should have found out anything about this man. Well, also, getting hit by a taxi is such a normal occurrence in New York. It doesn't really matter. And they do have some people dressed up as characters walking around. Oh, yeah. Like, it was genuinely just for them another New York day. It is, it's the yeah. New York experience. Yeah. And someone yelled at him for getting hit. You know, the taxi driver was mad that he killed a man. Said, hey, I'm, 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 I'm driving here. Yeah. I'm dri- <laughs> yeah. So everyone, nobody noticed. They just kept going. Honestly, they probably did. They were pro- Everyone saw this man get hit by a taxi and were upset that just for a split second, their day, they were distracted. The only reason why anybody noticed was because Rudolph was holding a slice of pizza that he didn't fold before taking a bite. They're like, hey, that's not the New York way. Mm, that's a sin in New York. Yeah. Even worse, he did fold it eventually, but he was using it as a hot dog bun. <laughs> no! <laughs> but Captain Remnick, I give him props. The man does not give up. So he continues investigating, and he finds the name Rudolph Fence Jr. in a 1939 telephone book. Why in the world he went and looked in a telephone book from 11 years, 12, what, 12 years previously? I have absolutely no idea why. What an odd time to choose. It was probably a shot in the dark. I, I, I wonder if he just was going through telephone books year by year. I don't know. Anyway, he finds Rudolph Fence Jr. in there. So Captain Rim visits the apartment building listed as Fence Jr.'s address, manages to get in uh, contact with the residents of the apartment building, and they claimed they remembered a fence junior, and they described him as being about 60 years old, and he had worked nearby. After returning in 1940, he moved to an unknown, lo- an unknown location, and no one heard of him again. Rim contacted the bank and was informed that Fence had passed away five years previously. But Fence Jr.'s wife was still alive, living in Florida. So he reaches out to Miss Fence Jr. And she told 
She told Captain Rim that her husband's father, Rudolf Fence, had disappeared in 1876 when he was 29. He left the house one evening to go for a walk and was never seen again. No matter how hard they tried, they never discovered what happened to him. He just put on a pair, of, a new pair of boots. He was like, I'm going to go break them in. And as he was walking, he's just like, man, these boots are made for walking. And he just, <laughs> and kept, he walking. just kept walking. And he, <laughs> he, he never walked back. Yeah. He walked, he walked so fast around the world. Like in Superman, he actually made it go forward in time. He walked all Amazing. the way to 1951. What a legend. Rim, so Captain Rim wasn't done. He continued to search missing persons report from 1876, and he found a file for a Rudolph fence. The person described in the file matched the appearance, age, and clothing of the mystery man who appeared in Times Square, but this case was marked as unsolved in fear of retaliation for claiming that Rudolph Fence was, in fact, a time traveler. Yo, imagine that. This guy actually figures out time travel back then. Like, we're trying to figure it out right now, right? And he figures it out, and he time travels, and then immediately gets hit by a taxi, and that technology is just gone now. <laughs> He's the only one who had it, and he Sad. just has to get hit. Was it his boots? Was it the beer token? The three-legged race medal? A combination of all the objects. I think it's a combination, combination of both. Yeah. yeah, he had to put the token in his mouth, <clears throat> get hit by lightning while holding the rest of the objects, and it transported him in time. But also, he's walking while he got hit by lightning, and then so that's why he's like, whoa. Yeah. What? That's how it works. You, you What? You get hit by a lightning. It's, yeah. Well, they do it in Back to the Future. Back they to have the to future. go with a certain speed and then hit the, the you, telephone line. You got to get that gigawatts, man. Get those gigawatts. Yeah, so he, instead of his big electric pole, he had his copper token mm. and he put it in his teeth and had his head held real high and he started walking as fast as he could. So I got to know right now, is that your actual honest goodness prediction on how Rudolph Fence ended up in 1951? Well, what? No. <laughs> I can't say it is. I just haven't heard enough of the story yet, okay? Well, that's <laughs> it. The story stops. Well, oh, man. that's where you're wrong, because mm. we have Rudolph Fence here in the studio. Everyone give it up for Rudolph. Come on in! He's he's dead. He got hit by a taxi. We have his corpse in here. Yeah. It took a while to dig him up, but uh, I think we got him. <laughs> We identified him by the medal for the three-legged race. Yeah, we saw a third leg. Which he was buried with. He had a th- yeah, oh a third my leg. gosh, that makes total sense. Yeah. He's the he entered in a three-legged race by himself. They're like, no, you need two people. Like, no, like, no, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. Do you, do you see my third leg right now? And they go, oh, well, uh, okay, yeah. In reality, in reality, this man. What do you, what do you think? What do you think, time traveler? Well, actor, magician. If I think somebody that it's Captain fake. Captain Rim killed and is trying to cover up the whole thing because he's actually a taxi driver part time and he was too embarrassed to admit to the squad that he wasn't making <laughs> oh enough gosh. to get by and that during the day he was working as a taxi driver. Yeah, that's trying to solve crime. Yeah, like he, was he couldn't like, let the, let the job go. Yeah. You know, it happens. No, 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 no. So I think it's fake. I'm going to go with fake. Yeah, I think so too. Now, let me explain myself. Let me, before y'all get riled up. And, <laughs> I'm riled up. Are there time travel? The <laughs> most, <laughs> the most <laughs> common argument against this story is a claim that it appeared in a popular novel book at the time. It's a short story. And that's just honestly what I'm prone to believe. Yeah, and I read it, and it's by Jack Finney, and mm-hmm. it's I'm Scared, and it's the last uh, part of the short story, so. And is the story, you read the whole story? The whole story, Does it yeah. follow this? To the point. To a T? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just prone to believe that's, I think that's all it is. Now, the thing is, you go online, there's a lot of people who will go into a little more depth on why this is not the same story from the book, and or... It is true, and the book was just telling a true story. But regardless of their arguments, I just don't. I absolutely see it, that. It's no far-fetched. way. I see absolutely no way this is true in any way. Well, it, just like the the to be able to time travel in theory, 
it's just not possible for the means he had set up. Unless one thing he had in his pocket that got left behind was a black hole, it's not possible. He's been carrying a black hole with him all this time. Okay, so I, so are we all agreed that this is this is not this is not true? Yeah, I think it's fair to say that Rudolph cannot. Yeah, it's just it's not happening that he's that this is not it, Rudolph is he's made up. He's a, he's a, he's from a short story character from a short story, and that's that's it, right? Yeah, okay. he's not real. Now, now we've settled that. If Rudolph is real. How did that happen? How the crap did a 29 year old man from 1876 get blasted in 1951 Times Square, New York, mid June? That's I think that's the important part. I, I mean, I'm not too. It makes sense he could end up in 1951 from 1876. The question is mid June. How did that happen? He, I mean, he would have to be able to tear space time. Yeah, everything was. I mean, I can jump twelve years in the future. That's pretty easy. But trying to land exactly mid June. Yeah, mid June is the hardest place to time travel to. But it is also the most. It's it is the most wanted time to try time travel to. Every time traveler wants to go into mid June, but it's it's so difficult and it's dangerous. By golly, Rudolph, it's the daredevil. By golly. Now I and, okay, let's. What do you think? Christopher Tyler, one of you two, what do you think? What is your theory? How did Rudolph Fence time travel 12 years with... It's, how do you do it? How do you stay intact? Other than, you know, getting hit by a taxi immediately after appearing. Okay, so my theory is... Is he himself didn't figure out time traveling. Someone from the far distant future figured out time traveling it came back to his time period to pull a prank and send rudolph into the future scare the crap out of the guy the dude appears in times square and gets hit i genuinely think it would if if this was real it was some future youtuber making a, a social experiment prank video by going back in time sending someone in the old times to the future and it went wrong when the dude got hit by a taxi, so his video got changed from prank to social experiment. Hey, 1876, prank invasion here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's just like, mm, we haven't killed someone with a taxi yet from the past. We've only done it in the present time. Now, could you guys imagine the prank of ripping a man from 1876 into 1951 and smashing him into a taxi? I mean, I have these dreams constantly. I don't know about you guys. Now, here's... <laughs> what? You, get, you have dreams about ripping a man from his home, yeah. throwing him into the future into a taxi. Is that not normal? I don't know. Okay. I have some pretty weird ones. Yeah. Nothing like that though. Okay. Might involve eating half a jar of peanut butter and then killing a man and then putting it in his pocket and framing him for eating half the jar of peanut butter. Chris, we did that two weeks ago. Crunchy or smooth? That one. Um, smooth. Crunchy's a no go. Oh, crunchy's not like crunchy. Crunchy's really the only way to go. It will give you fun. away. You just crunch, 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 crunch. crunch, crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to do it secretly, you gotta do smooth. But crunchy is my favorite. I mean, yeah, this isn't for flavor. This is for getting away with murder. Mm. Now, as far as time travel goes, it's you've got to understand the two big bosses of time manipulation. Special relativity and father time and father time. I knew it. Now, special relativity, everyone knows, easy peasy, understood how to manipulate it, how to use it. General relativity, thrown out years ago as being a, a, a fluke, everyone knows that. Father time, on the other hand, he is the key, he's the secret, he is the treasure map to going into the future, into the past, here, there, where, now, when, why, all of it. He is Father Time, yeah. and we, we're none of it. You've got to, the key for time traveling through Father Time is you've got to catch him while he's in his beer coma watching The Simpsons at, you know, 1 a.m., and then you sneak up behind him, choke him out, and he freaks out, sends you through time. You put him in a half, Nelson. You got to wait, though. You can't choke him out. If you choke him out, he's useless. You got to wait till he's on the verge of collapse. You let go. Batista bomb him into the couch hard enough to break, rip through time and space, open a wormhole in Father Time's living room. 
ripping you through here nor there. Sounds like and a good where plan. do you end up? 1951, mid-June, New York, Times Square, in front of a taxi. And that is the only way to end up in mid-June, 1951, in front of a taxi. So you're saying Rudolph Fence is this WWE superstar who wrestled Father Time and oh, yeah. ended up in 1951. Listen. In front of a taxi. So he's better. Mid-June. He's better than Stone Cold Austin. Okay, Stone Cold Austin. We got John Cena, The Rock. Undertaker. Undertaker. Of course. I know this is a monster oh. truck, but Grave Digger? Grave Digger. Don't forget Bonesaw. Bonesaw. Bonesaw's ready. You cannot forget Bonesaw. Listen, they, he, Rudolph Fence is the inspiration for all of it. Oh my gosh, I did not know it. If all of those wrestlers and Monster Truck got together and formed into one one being, Rudolph, Rudolph would still kick their butts. Oh, it okay. is Rudolph Fence. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, the more you know. Now here's the thing. We understand that maybe you don't have the finesse to pull off a pro-tier, top-class WWE fighting maneuver. So you're going to have to stick to just the two basic special relativity and general relativity. We understand that. It may be pseudoscience, but just give it a go. <laughs> Some call it witchcraft, blah, blah, blah. Just try it. We prefer the term voodoo, hoodoo. We do? We, we do. do. You do, hopefully. Yeah. We're hoping you do. That's what we're hoping. So general relativity, let's, let's talk about it. General relativity? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so general relativity is one of Einstein's big, big thoughts. A big old big, thought bubble. One of his big brain times. It's He's, big brain time. Yeah, he sat down and he went, mm, and there it was. He's like, general relativity. He produced the biggest thought cloud you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Yeah. In so, fact, some say it's still floating around to this day. Don't get caught in it. Yeah. Because, well, so the idea behind general relativity is... It kind of explains gravitational pull and, like, why planets are in orbit with each other. It talks about, like, so special relativity and general relativity are about time, space, and things moving at constant speeds, blah, 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 pseudoscience, right? <laughs> what we're trying to get at here is this pseudoscience focusing on time, space gives us an idea of how we could time travel, Listen, we, we need you to understand this is a very difficult concept to wrap your brain around, and I'm not actually joking about that. Time is a very real thing. It's not just a concept that we have made up. Now, how we view time is something that humans have made up. Time itself is a very real force in the universe. We can see that because things age. Time exists... And being understand that time can be manipulated and worked with is a very hard concept to wrap our brains around because we are so used to there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, 30 to 31 days in a month, 365, and so on and so forth. We are so used to that's how time works and functions and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it to them being told, no, time exists. It is a... It is a malleable object form force i i can't even begin to grasp that yeah the idea is it's a they say the fabric of time it's how they explain it is if you weigh enough you're gonna you're gonna start dragging that fabric down it's like when a baby you know their diaper starts sagging yeah Mm. No, more space. or less, actually, it's true. So sit down, hold your pants. This is Physics 101 with the Bone Patrol boys. Three people who have little to no experience in physics except for maybe some basic courses Ooh, in college. Hold up. I have soiled many of diapers. I know a lot okay, about physics. Hold up. Oh, I've, okay. taken, I've taken a physics class in college. I'm Mine taking high one school. currently. High school. Okay, we are probably more qualified than you are, so sit your bottom down and listen to this. In other words, to understand special relativity and general relativity, the stronger the gravity, the slower time moves. That is general relativity. Think of general, starts with a G. Gravity, starts with a G. General relativity, 
deals with gravity. I'm gonna repeat it one more time. The stronger the gravity, the slower time seems to move. And this has been proven. They've they've taken atomic clocks and put them on a high peak and put one way down close to the earth because there's more gravitational pull the closer you are to the surface of the earth. And it's only a couple of seconds, but they left them up there for years. And then when they brought them back together, they were different in time. Also, think about the scene from Interstellar where they're on the planet where I don't remember the exact equation. It was, oh, I don't know the equation. Whatever. Every so long on that planet was an astronomical amount of time yeah. on Earth. Yeah, it's Crazy. real. Yeah. It's a real theory. Now, space. Special relativity is the faster you get to moving at the speed of light, the slower time goes. Remember, special relativity as gravity starts with a G, special does not. Therefore, special is for speed. Therefore, it's not the gravity speed. one. Just remember speed, that. Speed, speed, speed. Now, once again, this is all relative as the name suggests. Time moves relative to other things there was space time space and time are relative mm-hmm. and it creates one thing space time so they're kind of like cousins in alabama is that right cousins in alabama the relatives but they're still combined combine one. them to one sweet old alabama now tyler how could one use these theories and implement them and like, how do those implement the time travel you know i'm just not seeing it our resident scientist, Tyler Webster, approaching the mic. Well, uh, I was thinking, um, if you go with the speed of light, um, you're moving so fast, and, uh... That's I, it. Yeah, you're just moving so fast, and everyone's going, wow, he's moving so fast, but he's not aging. What's going on? Right. No, I, and that seems to be what the general idea of time travel is. It's not so much you, you actually jump ahead in time you skip a period you're either under such intense gravity or you are moving at the speed of light or as close as you can get to it that everything around you is aging much 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 faster than you are yeah comparatively to you yeah they also another idea is going through a black hole they think that that could have something to do with it because we can see that it is morphing space time around it it's got so much gravitational force it sucks all of that into it and you can see light gets trapped in there and it goes somewhere we just don't know where so it messes with it the only problem with that is you get too close you turn into a bowl of spaghetti spaghetti Spaghettification, yeah. It will suck you in and tear you, string you out real thin and then tear you apart. So you can't go that route. So if you could harness the power of a black hole in a machine, there's an idea. That's true. Now how could we get a black hole man-made? Um, who framed Roger Rabbit once again? He portable holes. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Well, what if this? What if we took a hard drive? That holds a gig. All right, just go back to when that was the case. Think of the old iPad, iPad, iPod shuffles and nanos that held a single gig. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we've got iPods similar size that hold how much? 500, 500 gigs? Yeah. But they're a similar terabyte. size. Somehow we have packed more information into a similar sized area. And we continue to see that. Terabytes, pen. Pentabyte, pentabytes, yeah. and so on and so forth. And pizza if, bites, pizza bites, pizza bites, bagel bites. I love Just the, all bites. the good bites. Yeah. Now, what if we continue on this path, and eventually we continue to make hard drives that are the same size, and they just keep packing more and more and more and more information into them until they are so dense with information they collapse on themselves and create a mini black hole? Are you, I'm sorry. Are you asking me to illegally download a black hole? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm asking you to get into the tech industry, infiltrate Apple. Apple. And I won't illegally hole. download a black hole. I'm sorry. But I feel that's the only way modern time, you know, that seems like a plausible <coughs> plausible path. Yeah. I mean, I mean you could do the what's it? The uh super collider. I, I forget where it's at, but where they shoot um I think it's protons or neutrons at each other and then they collide and then they the, people theorize that that could create a black hole it could rip, it could yeah. rip a uh, a hole in the space-time fabric um but that has yet to happen 
you and me both have very different definitions of super collider. That was a game we used to play when we were kids where we just put helmets on and run at each other full speed. Yeah, I, I still have problems remembering stuff, so. What a good game. Yeah. The other option, on the other hand, besides playing a children's game, is if we can locate a wormhole. Because it's believed that that wormhole, if you could pass through it, connects to a different piece of space-time. Because it is a fabric. So the I picture picture folding a piece of paper, but just don't pinch it shut. Don't do hamburger or hot dog style. Just like oh, get man. a nice curve in it. And then you put a hole through the top and it goes down to the bottom one. That's the wormhole. It's So if f the fabric of time is a river and it's flowing and it comes up and around the curve to the top, starting at the bottom, up around the curve to the top then you could potentially go through that hole down to the bottom river and then float back up around the curve to the top to your timeline. Another so. way I've heard it explained, if you're having a hard time picturing that, is think of a trampoline. What happens, so a, a trampoline sits relatively flat on its own. When you put a heavy object on it, what does it do? It sags it's, down. Yeah. So think of time, the, the fabric of space as a trampoline. And we have planets sitting on them and the planets are really heavy and they sag down on the fabric. Now what happens if you get two really, really heavy objects, they sag down and are virtually now next to each other. Well, mm. although they are still located on opposite ends of the trampoline. Now, if we could figure out, instead of trying to go from one end of the trampoline to the other to get to those objects, since they're now sagging right next to each other, what if we could rip through that tiny piece of the fabric and just jump from one to the other? Now that's where a black hole could Possible, be used yeah. is to rip that piece of the fabric and somehow survive the black a, hole assuming yeah. it goes through and my understand there is a way to survive a black hole but you have to manage to be smaller than the singularity of the black hole and you'd be able to travel through it safely yeah and the singularity of a black hole is very 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 small yes but hey we're not saying it's impossible right it's just not probable we're just not Currently, we we don't have any way of doing that, but we see it as a technical possibility. It's very theoretical, but it's not applicable. It's not impossible. It's impossible, yeah. Right? Right. Right. So we're saying, Rudolph Fence, maybe, maybe he did it. <laughs> maybe he has two black holes and he was able to travel through a wormhole. Maybe. So we're going with I, I I've been trying I, to come up with a way this happened. I can't think of any plausible way Rudolph Fence jumped into the future. Yeah, I mean, unless once again, unless someone who from the future time traveled back and tore the fabric of time and he's who happened to get caught in it. I don't think it happened. That's yeah, no. Yeah. Even giving him full benefit of the doubt, omnipotent powers almost. A WWE superstar. Yeah, I even then. Could he pile drive the Earth hard enough to rip through time and space? Oh, I don't think about that maneuver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I, th I don't know. I used to have nothing else on this. It seems, you know, at least in the other episodes we've done, we've been at least theorize possible ways this could have happened yeah this one's hard yeah this one's hard i i think it's safe to say he did not time travel and we can we can put this bad boy away we're gonna lock it up we're gonna put his body that we illegally dug up back into its grave and then lock it yep all right we're locking the crypt and that's it rudolph fence done gone well you Maybe. know we don't actually have well, hmm. where is Rudolph Fence? It's bouncing around. A dead corpse flying through space, probably. He was here. He's now gone. Where is he at? We don't know. <laughs> what a man. But we're going to lock the crypt anyways, where he should be. And, uh, wow. What a doozy. Well, let's end it with some goodnight kisses, Tyler. Goodnight kisses. All right, this one's from me. We got one from Aaron. Um, and I guess I'll, I, I could spare one, too. Well, there we have it. I know it's a little shorter of an episode, but, hey, we don't have to... I, unless one of you reaches out with some real hard evidence on how 
somebody's time traveling or we got our pro- okay we didn't get it wrong but if you think we got our physics wrong reach out but you're wrong i don't think we need to cover time travel ever again ever again unless you happen upon a time travel machine then bring it on the show yeah and we'll use it well christopher will use it what no yeah like th- yeah like the one in napoleon dynamite with the crystal with yeah the crystals i have crystals all right next episode christopher's gonna try to time travel i use my crystals for health benefits i mean those don't work it's only es- essential oils i put them in my water mm, yum i mean i do the same thing with essential oils Rudolph Fence with your copper five cent beer coin. How'd you end up in Times Square tonight? Rudolph got hit by a taxi. Walking down Times Square. Rudolph, you weird pimp. <laughs> no one really I, knows where he goes. I don't I don't know what, what's going on. Captain Ram found the body and took it to the local morgue. He couldn't find any evidence about Rudolph. So he went and visited some old people. Then he went down to Florida. Where he found Rudolph's mom. <laughs> Die, granddaughter. Uh, uh, wife. Well, Rudolph Jr.'s uh, Grand- Rudolph Jr. Uh, daughter? Daughter-in-law. Da- yeah, maybe. We're not really sure how they were related. But she really had something... They found out Rudolph once lived in 1876. And then they never found poor Rudolph. Because he kept walking, 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 walking. And he's still walking around today. Yay.